Now you have seen the but. Right? Jerusalem is central to Judaism. When we pray, we pray in the direction of Jerusalem. When we say certain prayers, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Some Jews pray for the restoration of the temple in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is more central to Judaism than it is to any of the other religions. But as you have seen in the film, the other religions have claims, religious claims, upon Jerusalem. There are also national claims upon Jerusalem. One of the questions of our time is, should the Palestinians, in the event of the creation of a Palestinian state, have a capital in Jerusalem? How do you accommodate all of these religions? How do you satisfy religious and political aspirations? This is a problem that probably can be solved with a certain amount of goodwill. Should there be an internationalization of the city? Should Israel remain in control of all of Jerusalem, allowing for extraterritorial status for a Palestinian capital and certain Palestinian buildings? Should Israel have complete control over the place, over the city of Jerusalem. I don't have a monopoly on the truth. I cannot tell you what the solution would be. If it were me and I were making the decision, given the fact of the centrality of Jerusalem to Judaism and to the Jewish people, given the fact that only Israel has guaranteed and will continue to guarantee access to all of the holy places, if it were me, Israel should have control of Jerusalem, an undivided city. But Israel does not exist in a vacuum. Israel has to negotiate its way with the Palestinians and with the rest of the world, particularly the United States. But something has changed. And what has changed is now that there is a sovereign independent state of Israel. For the first time in 2,000 years, the Jewish people living in Jerusalem, in that Jewish state, can determine their own future. I would suggest to you, be careful. Be very, very careful. I will give you a statement that does not rank with Torah Me Sinai. For sure. That much of an egomaniac I am not. But one thing one ought never to forget, whether it is in Jer on Jerusalem or on security matters, we are here and the Israelis are there. Which means that a sovereign state, which is responsible for the defense of its people, for the protection of all holy places, has the right to make the most important decisions as to Jerusalem's destiny. Put succinctly, it is not for an American president, it is not for the European Union, it is not for the United Nations. The future of Jerusalem must be primarily an Israeli decision. In the 66th year of Israel's birth, of its rebirth, one ought to understand what it means to have a sovereign Jewish state. That state that we commemorate, that we celebrate, that state has been the ultimate place of refuge for the Jewish people. That state is Silicon Valley East. That state defends our people wherever they may, may be. Remember July 4th, 1976. Israeli planes land with Israeli soldiers and rescue Jewish captives in from, uh, from again from Mentebi, forgive me. And 13 years later, Israeli planes will land, this time not with soldiers, but with doctors and nurses, with lots of medical equipment, 
and they will extricate 13,000 Ethiopian Jews. They will land at Addis Ababa. May Abdut Lahirut, from slavery into freedom, our tradition says, how many times in the history of Africans have Africans been taken out, not from Africa to slavery, but from Africa to freedom? And finally, of course, on a birthday for Israel, again, it is not said in the film. This is a nice film, a pleasant film. It doesn't jar the sensibilities. But Israel lives in a perpetual state of siege. And when all is said and done, Israel is far closer to Athens than it is to Sparta. It is the only democratic city, the only democratic state within the Middle East. It is one of the world's great democracies. Kolakavod Israel, Haksameh.